Welcome back to another episode on the Mullet Mustang, presented by Turn 14 Distribution. Pete and I were obviously pretty bummed at the end of that last track test, so we've decided to give it another go. We're pulling out all the stops on a bunch of ghetto cooling mods, and we're going to go back to the track and see what happens. So we're here with On Point Dino doing a little intake shootout on the mullet and we noticed we've had 15 wheel horsepower disappear on us, which may help explain why our lap times and our quarter mile times weren't quite what we were hoping for last time at the track. Sasha checked the tune for us. We've gone through everything as carefully as we can and there's really no explanation for where that 15 wheel horsepower went. It's pretty frustrating because it kind of negates a lot of the games we got out of the camshafts, but it is what it is at this point. We're just going to go with life. it. Exactly. We're going to uh, do some heat control mods, take it back to the track and send it. Well, after we saw those lower numbers on the dyno, we figured we got to do some uh, checkup on the motor and see what the compression's like. Maybe do a leak down test too. So we've done the first seven cylinders and they were all good. Yeah, they're all at 200. So we're going to do the last one here and move on, I guess. Let's see what happens here. All right, give her. Okay. Yeah, that one's 210. So that means our compression's good. good. Yeah, they were like 200 to yeah. 210 yeah, across the is, board. Again, so. makes this even more puzzling now. So it is. maybe we'll do a, like one or two Let's cylinders leak for leak down and, and see, yeah. have a look. It's looking good. It's looking real good. Yeah, there's only like 2% so leak down on that. So this is cylinder. reading 90. We're reading, what, 88-ish 88. yeah. on our chart here at 90 PSI. 88 PSI is 2% leak down. Yeah. More leak down results. She's still looking good, PT. Yeah, it's only uh, a couple of percent there, so I think she's a healthy motor. We've yeah, got we don't need to do the other on. ones. I don't think there's any reason to do that. Yeah. So. Step two in track prep is trying to get some cooling out of this car, which after doing some internet research, we decided removing the grill was a good first step because this thing is actually super restrictive. You can see a bunch of the honeycombs there's along really the top. Only, yeah, there's like this area up. here, this area here, and this area here. And we've got an oil cooler yeah. in front of it. So there's literally, like look at the airflow that we have, fresh air yeah. coming to the radiator. There is not much. We've got the oil cooler now that's blocking most of where the grill goes. I'll show you in a second. And then we've got these horns, and then we've got our condenser. Which is a the condenser is a mess. Like yeah, it's just like well, dirty. look at down here. This yeah. this is all flattened to hell here. Yeah, yeah. So really, we're just lacking a ton of. There's no good airflow to the rat, is there? Fresh air heading there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're gonna remove the front grill. I think that's that's a good start for us. Yeah. Tempted to maybe remove the headlight too and get some fresh air to the intake, but I'm not sure if we're gonna do that because street driving with no headlight might be a. Uh, it's a little illegal. Sketchy. There are lots of aftermarket grill options for this car. Roush makes a nice one that is like a nine bar billet grill that has much better airflow than this one. I think they actually claim 60% better airflow than this, which would be a good upgrade if we were going to uh, spend more money on this car. But yeah, know. if we were going like full track spec, I would pull these fog lights out because man, look, like look how much yeah, you could, real you, estate you could there a nice is. Duck to an intake off of that. Yeah. yeah. But we're not doing that. No. Like I said, the mod, the mods are done on the Mustang. It's just time to get now. Some it's just a matter out. of uh, exactly extracting all the power it can get. Look at this. Oh, yeah. I feel like this is what people do these days. Like pull their grills out for shows just we to be different. That, but we're the... actually doing that for function. Yeah. And look at this Pro Spec heat shield, everyone. Reinforcing it with the tape. I well, like it's, it. It's not necessarily a heat shield. It's just a. I'm gonna call this an airflow diversion panel that right, I'm right here yeah sorry it's not a heat shield you're right you're just trying to close off any leak sources around the radiator right, right. and uh normally you'd make this out of thin sheet metal but we're on a remote location as you can see we're That's working right. out of moose's mm. garage right here yeah, yeah yeah and we're trying to get some stuff done before we go to the racetrack which means you just use what you got and right. for the one track session we're trying to do here to see if this works. Why not? It's worth Let's a shot, right? This is a zero cost mod right there now. There you go, that's true. I think that's the better way to put it. I guess other than Moose's duct tape, but you know, it, it didn't cost us anything. It cost no, Moose No, there something. you go. Look at this 
piece of ducting masterpiece. I mean, when you got to use cardboard, zip ties, and tape, yep. it's going to be a winner, right? Look, Look at, at this. That. That is Look at it. Zip tied in place. So Not that that would ever rip. No, that'll never rip. No. And, no. and this side too. Like this is like full funnel. Full funnel. Ready for some Lamal racing with this yeah, setup. Yeah, we are ready to rip. You know it. So let's get this bumper on and get to the racetrack. We made it back to our home away from home here at Toronto Motorsports Park. Look at all, all the ghetto stops with the ice on the intake manifold. Our super ghetto ducting survived the drive here, so that's a good sign. But the more we look at the AC condenser, it is yeah, it's just just a mess. It's it's there's no air that yeah, smash and, down there's just no airflow through and, and it, there's so. no fresh air that gets to the radiator period here it has to go through the condenser yeah which is super crummy know. yeah i'd like to know if like track guys who run these cars at the track do you remove your condenser is that part of the cooling solution on these cars let us know in the comments if you have some feedback on that other than that pt i think we're ready to go i bumped up the tire pressures a bit so that they get warmer a little bit quicker which should coincide with that that one hot lap i hope to pump in there before we head over to the drag strip, so I'm not sure if it's going to get much cooler, so maybe it's just time to go rip. Try it hard, people. I'm trying hard. DP, it looks like you uh, put in about 10 laps, so I don't think we have an overheating problem anymore. It seemed good. Like, I didn't feel like it was pulling power. Our, our auto meter Wi-Fi gauges lately, just lately, seem to not want to connect every time. And by the time I was on the track and saw they hadn't connected, I was like, I'm getting some going. I think they may be connecting to my phone, which is the issue. Oh, so okay. So it's a bit of a, a problem there. But yeah. Anyways. So I, I, didn't, I couldn't see the temps, but I could feel like the car wasn't losing power. The tires were overheating because I was just literally driving the shit out of this thing. I was in like full drift mode half the time. I, I couldn't have tried harder. So I feel good about that aspect of it. And we were so close on lap times. We were less than a tenth of a second off of the Boss 302's time. So, I mean, yeah, we didn't beat it, but we're so close. I feel like I, I, I'm satisfied with the effort. I feel like with different traffic conditions, the time is there. So I'm, I'm satisfied. You know, I could go out there and try to prove it, but we're close enough. I'm yeah, good. Yeah, totally. And we got a drag strip over here waiting for you, so I think it's time to go and see if you can improve on that 13.8. Maybe dis disconnect some sway bars. Try some test our aim versus the actual lap time or the actual timing system over there because it's a test and tune night. That's really what I'm the most intrigued about. Yeah, is to see the difference between the uh, the lap timer and the actual clock timer. Yeah, we kind of came to the thought the other day of like, I wonder how accurate this is for quarter mile. We know it's really good for lap times. But we don't know if it's very good for quarter mile, so let's go find out. All right, PT, what top secret tuning tricks you got going on in there? I'm not sure I'm convinced of this, but the internet experts say drop the front sway bar, so we've disconnected it, which should technically give us a little bit more weight transfer, let us hook off the line better. Right. So that's a plan, but... Worth a shot. Yeah, we're gonna do this and uh, go for a couple passes down the strip. 5720, that's right, we're going real drag racing and it is busy tonight. Oh my goodness, yeah. look at the lineup of yeah, cars. 
So I'm not sure we're gonna get too many runs in. We may see one, two, I don't know, before this place closes. I think it's done at nine, right? Uh, I don't know, I think it's later go, than that. Well, anyways. I gotta I, go by nine though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> we, we basically probably gonna get two passes in max. It doesn't give me much opportunity to, but my main thing is to test out our aim, to see how it compares. That's my big thing, because then we know that whether there was a big discrepancy. But today's lapping went so well, you know that the car isn't overheating. So we should get an accurate uh, picture of what our ET and mile per hour is here. So, well, I think it's time to jump in in about 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we've moved a little, but not much. This place is insane tonight, DP. It's crazy. And oh, uh, <laughs> the lineup is, we're gonna be lucky to get two passes in. Man, if that, like, geez, it's already nine o'clock. I know. It's crazy. I'm not sure why it's not moving a bit faster. Unless I these think are it's some really it's one slow of these, like, big weekends here. Yeah. Something like that, so. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of cars. I guess we gotta move. Big close. Helmet's on, man. We're, we are getting close here. Ready. Let's see how this goes. Oh, there is no traction out here. Damn it. No traction. Unfortunately, we've got no traction at all. Man, what well, do you think? Um, it's the fastest we've ever gone. Yeah. Uh, 13.7 at 106.8, so we'll call that 107 mile an hour. Yeah, so pretty good. It's better. It's actually we read a 14.09 on here. I think at 104. Oh wow! So we're off so a fair bit. It is off a fair bit. Give me one more try. Right, let's, let's cue this it. up let's and do, do it. it. All right. So pretty much the same speed as before and I did a pretty sweet burnout so I left a little bit slower off the line I feel like I need about 10 more passes to get this perfected thanks no way oh man for a moment there I thought we went 13-0 <laughs> The guy, the Mustang next to me went 13.0, but we went a 13.89, people. Not great at 106 miles an hour. I don't know what to say, man. It's tough. I think I, the car is not set up for drag racing and it just doesn't have the power. The power is not here. Unfortunately, this car will not have a 12 second pass in it at well, this point without, in time not with these mods yeah, not, not and not with, with this setup exactly <laughs> well yeah. drag racing is drag racing right? yeah yeah and we didn't build a drag car no so. we definitely did not i think that's the takeaway here is that a road racing car cannot go drag racing and be fast right? yeah it's hard to build something to do everything and being road race guys we kind of did what we do and it it is a good car on the track but it definitely isn't the right setup. yeah yeah it is and you know what once it gets going you can feel it, it makes decent jam so yeah. it, it's it's not a slug down the, the strip it's just getting it off the line and looking at the aim data man like my, that last pass was a 1418 at 104 on the which aim. was a 138 on the real system i think maybe 1384 yeah 106 so, yeah so the aim's definitely off by okay. three or four which tenths. means that 13.8 pass that we did here time, yeah. with 
with the uh, the, the aim. Yeah. That it's may have been a, a 13.5, 13.4, yeah. Yeah, I think so. It was so, looking way better when yeah, it was like, warm. Yeah, like tonight you can tell it's it, you just can't get off the line. Like I had tried it there at 3,000 RPM and it didn't move very well. It yeah, still spun. Yeah. But the other time when it, the track was warm, the tires were hot, it was moving. Yeah, it was hooking up. Moving, right? moving, moving. Yeah, so, yeah. but. I think that's that's a wrap for this episode, right? Yeah, I think so. We're, we're done. We're and done with the performance part of this I whole know, series. I know. I know. We've got go one more episode that we're going to do some hard parking at. Yeah. And uh, that is going down to Turn 14 Distribution. So watch it and tune in very soon. I'm not sure I'm convinced about this, but disconnecting the front sway bar 